Hello all. Uh, today we're going to go with uh, .NET and base conversion, uh, number base conversion actually. So we're going to spend a lot of time comparatively on the uh, underlying concepts and then a little bit of time just doing the code. Uh, the code actually makes it very, very easy to do. Um, so I thought it'd be good to just do some background information. Um, so basically number bases are just going to be uh, what you count to or what the uh, maximum value of any single place in a number is. So for example what we're used to is going to be base 10. It's what we normally count in. It's 1, well, 0 through 9 or 1 through 10. Uh, but it, practical application it's more of 0 through 9. So we do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then we get move to the next place um, or 11. So pretty straightforward and we're really used to just kind of seeing it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 is the first set of basically the next place in that base. Um, and we can do that until 20 and then we can do it until 99 and then after 99 we're going to shift again uh, you know, to the left basically add another place to it and get to 100. Um, so here we can kind of look at it and see that to some extent you can even just kind of say you can take your base to the power of your places to get kind of your maximum number uh, that you can go through. So for like 10 to, 10 to the first power we get 10, 10 to the second we get 100, 10 to the third we have 1,000. So our max value is basically we have 1,000 different numbers up until that point. Um, I'll just say right now that even though that's your maxed max number of things it's not necessarily your biggest number because we do generally start at zero so for 10 to the third for example there's a thousand numbers in that number line at that point our highest value generally is going to be 999 um, so that's easy enough right um, then we have other bases which is really nothing new um, in human language and history, we have all sorts of bases. We've got base 4 in some cultures, um, base 8, um, because the, one of the popular opinions, if you ever really look into it, is that base 10 has a lot to do with it. We have 10 fingers. Um, or you can have those people that used to play the joke, essentially, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? You hold up both hands, all digits, all digits extended, and when you answer 10, they say, no, your thumbs aren't fingers. Um, so, 10, 8 also bases that we use. Um, we also have base 16 um, especially in like say computer science um, and then we also use um, base 60 in time so you've got 60 seconds, 60 minutes etc. Um, but popular bases that we encounter now don't really include a lot of those or at least we don't think of them as bases. One that is a popular one, um, one that you know, computer geeks and com supposedly computers speaking is binary. So basically with binary, what we're looking at is basically you've got a max of two values per place in your numbers. So if you go 0, 1, you've basically reached the top of your base. So then you shift left and you've got 1, 0 for 3 and then you've got um, one one for you know your your fourth value essentially, and then one zero one one, uh, one zero zero, one zero one 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 zero one one one, and it just keeps going that way um, until you reach what we in the you know computer field call a byte, which is going to be eight places. Um, so we can still do our uh, places to the power, or I'm sorry base to the power of our places to kind of see what our max numbers is. So two to the first you have two possible values or in one place you could do zero one. Um, two to the second is going to be four possible numbers. Two to the third is going to be eight possible numbers. And then again we can still do our since you can't really count zero our max value for two to the third is going to be seven. Zero through seven. So still gets pretty simple pretty straightforward I think. Um, I think really where it gets a little bit weirder though is when we get to numbers that are bigger than what our normal counting system allows us to count to. Um, and it's not so much maybe weirder, it's so much just more abstract to us. You know, we've got digits for 0 through 9. 
Um, but when you get over 9 or get over 10, uh, you know, we don't really have anything to count with. So I think it helps here to remember that even our, our digits, our numbers, they're just symbols that represent something that we are familiar with, our, our base number system. Um, so if we want to say count to 15 or 16, you know, use hexadecimal um, as our base, then we just need something to represent those extra numbers. Um, what we typically use is going to be the Roman alphabet, A through F specifically. Um, so really the same concept applies here. The only real difference here is that we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's really pretty simple. Um, and again, you just kind of take the concept that you know you subtract 1 to get your max value, where uh, F is 16 possible numbers, 0 through 15. Um, and then we can get... Uh, we can write out bigger numbers, I think, is an easy way to say it. Bigger numbers in a shorter form. Um, there's also other advantages to doing one base over another. Um, and it gets really complicated. It's an interesting topic on its own, really. Um, but I think probably at this point what we're kind of wondering is, you know, what does all this have to do with C-sharp? Um, I think... You know, our first instinct is probably going to be to try to write various algorithms ourselves to sort through it and go, okay, so we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that we can use, but once we get here, then, you know, divide it by 16 and replace it with an A or an F if it, you know, the, the modulus operator returns zero. And, you know, it, it would work. It'd be fun. It'd be a, probably a good little project to do just to, work out the logic and make sure that you can do it on your own but there's no need to um, C sharp actually does all the work for us um, so I really did just go more in depth than required for this I just wanted to cover it a little bit um, but let's go ahead and move on to the code which really really is super easy so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and create a form and I went ahead and did this ahead of time so you don't have to wait on me this time um, and we're gonna need let's see we're gonna need eight nine ten labels we need ten labels and a track bar the track bar um, I have set value 0 to 255 and then I have a label uh, a label label decimal or with text as decimal and then I've got a uh, label LBL deck I've got binary and LBL bin I've got octal because octal is another fun one and then LBL oct Oh, LBL octal, I'm sorry. Um, I've got hexadecimal and LBL hex. And then eventually I'm going to show you how to go back the other way from hex to decimal. Um, so I've got hex to decimal and LBL hex to dec. Okay. And then what I have done is I've created a private void set labels. And then I've set calls to that both in the trackbar scroll and also in the form one load. And I'll give you just a second to catch up. You can also, of course, pause. Because waiting is the funnest thing to do. Okay, so to what we're going to do here, um, now that we've got our form set up and the basic uh, method set up, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do, and like I said, this is really going to be super easy and straightforward, so don't worry about it too much. Um, we're going to set in our set labels method um, to make sure we have the value of our track bar. And actually, I need to uh, declare this correctly. So we're going to call this int value. Okay. And then we're just going to start off by doing just our first two, basically, so that we can get a, a real easy feel for how it's done. And you can type with me a little bit. Um, so for our decimal, we're going to do label decimal dot text equals value dot two string. Okay. 
And then for our, we're going to start with binary just because it's the smallest. And lbl bin.txt equals, and we need to convert dot to string, and it's going to be value, and this is the fun part, uh, what base we're going to use. There we go, just like that, double parenthesis, close it off, and it'll look just like that, and then we're going to go ahead and hit debug, and here we go. So, so far, we've only got the two that actually work, but we see here decimal, zero, binary, zero. So let's move that just a tiny bit. There we go, decimal one, binary one, okay. Good, let's move that up just a little bit more. Decimal two, binary one, zero. So it's working exactly as we would expect it to. And then we're gonna have one, one, whoops, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. And then it'll shift left one more time, assuming I can move it just one tick. There you go, just like that. And then again, we go all the way up to our maximum on the bar, which is decimal 255, which for binary is going to be 1111111. Okay, so works exactly as expected. Like I said, all the work is done for us. So all that stuff we talked about with you know how base conversions work and ba number bases really doesn't apply. But it is nice to know what it's doing. Um, so since I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and cheat on the next two lines um, because I'm thinking you can probably guess what we're going to do anyway. So I'm just going to drop it right in there. So well, all we've done here is, and I'll even break this off, but we've got lbl octal.txt equals convert to string value, and then our base again eight for octal. lbl hex.txt equals convert to string value and then our base 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire this up again, debug, let it run, we're gonna look at it and we're gonna go ahead and move our bar around. I'm not gonna step it through quite as much this time but with octal you'll see basically it's doing exactly what we would expect now. Um, so it's hexadecimal and hexadecimal let's go ahead and uh, set that right to 16 You know what? Um, actually, there we go. 16 is working. Yep, just like that. So we are still good. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and do from hexadecimal back to decimal which is going to be just a little, little tiny bit different um, in the way that we write this, um, but not different enough that it's anything to worry about. So basically we're going to do OBL or hexadecimal.txt equals, and we're going to go ahead and just make this a one-liner, not the prettiest. Maybe we don't really want to do this in anything else, but for what we're doing it's going to work just fine. Um, so convert to string dot to convert to int and we're going to do lbl hex whoops dot text and we're going to put the format of the original number that we're taking in this time so instead of doing it back to 8 we're going to do 16 since we're getting it from a 16 base and then we're going to close off our double parentheses call it good, hit debug, and so what we're hoping at this point, and what we should see, is that we're going to have our hexadecimal, but we're also going to have our decimal here, match our decimal up here. So let's just grab this and move it somewhere random and double check it. So 111 is 6F, it is also 111, or 11, yeah, 111, 111, 111, and still got all our numbers. So that really is all of it. So like I said, we had about six minutes, 30 seconds worth of explaining what we're doing on the back end, you know, the math behind it, and then we spent another uh, few minutes after that going through the code. Super easy, super fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, enjoy the uh, the likes, thumbs up, the recommendations, the shares, etc, etc, uh, just so that I have motivation to keep making fun little things like this. Thanks, bye.